Today, we are going to attempt to put LED lighting under these shelves without soldering at all, a completely plug and play option using WLED. So let's see if we can pull it off without soldering. This video is sponsored by Akera, but more on them at the end of the video. Now to get started, I purchased everything off of Amazon. I wanted this to be as easy as possible. So what that meant is that I got these BTF lighting LED strips. If you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I love warm white. And so these strips are the SK6812s, which means they're RGB and warm white. So they've got the red, green, and blue chip, as well as an individual warm white chip. So you're not trying to mix and match the RGB to get that warm white. It's got a true warm white. I've got little power supplies that I also got off Amazon. And then this WLED controller that I also got off of Amazon. And then this is the part that I have no idea if it's gonna work and we're gonna attempt it. These are the BTF lighting three pin DIY connectors. So typically, I'm just gonna say this now, soldering is definitely gonna be your best bet. That's gonna be the most stable connection, especially for sending all the data through. Um, but we're gonna try these because I wanna see if we can do this without soldering at all and get a good, stable LED setup on these shelves. So we will see how these things do. I expect that I'm not gonna be able to crimp these down with my hands and then I'm gonna need some pliers or something like that. So the LEDs that I went with are five volt. The controller also takes five volt. It also has a barrel connector. So you can just get one of these uh, little AC to DC wall plugs that has this little barrel connector on the end that will go right into that. And it also has the little connector so that can connect directly to the LED strip and that's pre-wired. Now a word of caution about this AC to DC converter adapter here. This one is five volts, three amps, which means you're gonna get a maximum of 15 watts out of this thing. This is not gonna be enough to power a full strip of these LED lights. Now what it will do is it would be able to get 100% brightness of just red or just green or just blue, but it cannot achieve 100% brightness of the warm white and any colors that use multiple chips. So I'll try to insert some B-roll here showing you that if I go to max brightness and I set it to like purple, it's gonna get very pink towards the end of the strip because it is running out of power. So what I got instead is five volt six amps, which I'm gonna try. And there's also a five volt five amp. So I'm gonna start with five volt five amp because I think this controller is rated for that. And I don't wanna exceed that and hopefully everything just works perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and take this LED strip and we're gonna cut one, two, three, four, five strips out. So I'm just gonna measure one and then we're gonna cut five. So it might use this whole strip plus some others. I've got three strips total because we're gonna do both sides here. So let's get started cutting. So this controller is pre-wired to just clip into these LED lights. This is pretty standard here. It also has a, another output, so it has two outputs here on the board. And one of the things that I really like is that when you power off in WLED, this actually has a relay that cuts power to this LED strip. Typically in WLED, if you turn off the LEDs and your controller doesn't have a relay, there's still some power going to the LEDs, um, which is completely unnecessary. So I like that it has a built-in relay so that when you turn it off, the only thing that is being powered is the board, which uses very little power, and the LEDs are completely off. Go ahead and just plug this in, see what it looks like. There we go, all right. So over the years, I've learned a few things. One is that you don't need the LEDs to go all the way to the edge of the cabinet in each direction. You can cut it off a couple inches inside. And the other is that almost no matter what strip you get, the double-sided tape that's on the back is almost never enough. So I usually, every six inches to a foot, I'll dab a little bit of hot glue, and that seems to hold it up pretty much permanently long-term. But I'm not gonna do the hot glue just yet. I'm gonna cut all of our strips, and then we're gonna try to connect them first, I think. So right now, we're just working on getting the proper strip length and what we like. Yeah, I think that's good. That's 64. Woo! I'm 
moment of truth for what is in this bag. So it looks like it has some brackets to hold up strip, but we don't need those. It's a very specific thing that we do need in here. So what I'm looking for is they'll have connectors in here that are con to connect two LED strips together and then connectors in here that are supposed to go three wire to the LED strip. It looks like you slide the strip in, slide the wires in, and then press these little gold blades down into the wire and into the strip. So I've done this two ways before in the past. One is to just put all the strips in and then wire it up after the fact, or I can kind of lay it out here, cut the wire, and it's probably gonna be easier to do that. One super important note here is that the strips that I got and most out there will have an arrow on it telling you which way that the data needs to go. So make sure that the arrow is always pointing in the direction that the data is gonna go. So you don't want arrows pointing against each other. You want them all going the same way away from the controller and the power supply. I did my first connection here. Seems relatively easy. Now I'm gonna do my second connection. Make sure that however you have, you know, if you have white being your ground or red being your ground, whatever, just make sure that you're consistent with whichever directions you are going. So here I did, so the positive is white for me, green is data, and red is ground. Probably should be the other way around. It is what it is. We're just gonna connect this one and then test. See how we did. It seems pretty straightforward. You just need some pliers here to crimp these things in. Just mash them. All right. So let us test. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Oh no. Oh, 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 hang on. This software is only set up to have 62, uh, 64, I mean. So let's increase this. All right, save. Ah, there we go. Now, lighting up a solid color, not impressive. Um, what I'm worried about is the data line right here. So you can see I have my, my one first shelf is here, second shelf is here. So let's just give it a sequence. Give me, give me something good. Chase, there we go. Okay. So what I'm probably gonna do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and install this first strip. And then I'll attach the next strip and kind of do that as we go maybe. Maybe that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Hey. All right, we just finished the second shelf here and definitely some learnings on these connectors. So the BTF lighting three pin DIY connector, trash. Do not get this. I used it on my right shelf. 
had to go back and I just soldered some of the connections, but generally way more trouble than it's worth. Um, really finicky. Um, you have to have the wires in there just right. When you're crimping down on it, the little blades can bend instead of going straight down. Anyway, I just avoid them, unfortunately. So do not get these. I don't even know this brand. I, I just searched around Amazon for these. Evidently, they are called F-L-U-T-E-S-A-N, Flutesen. They have 173 reviews and they have four stars. This is a great alternative to soldering. Soldering is still superior. They claim these are multi-use. Only use this one time. If you're breaking it apart and putting it back together, I did that on my very top strip up here. And it's the only connection that when I move it around, it flickers like crazy. The rest of them are like surprisingly rock solid. Again, soldering is gonna be better, but this is a pretty good alternative. You don't have to strip any of the wires back either, which is also great and gonna save you time. So this is a pretty quick install. And just to recap, I'm using two WLED controllers, one on each side. You could use one and do multiple outputs and like run the wire over. I did not wanna do that. So I have two power supplies that they're kind of huge. I wish they were smaller. This is all five volt. You could look into 12 volt alternatives, even with the five volts. The brightness level at the bottom versus the top. The top is not quite as bright, even at 100% brightness. So I could do some power injection or something like that. If it's really important to you to get you know perfect lighting, then you'd want to run some power from the bottom up to the very top at the end to kind of even out the voltage drop across that line. But generally, man, these Flutizen connectors worked really well. So that's a good alternative if you're looking to do something like this and soldering scares you. But I would say, learn a new skill, learn how to solder, and will serve you very well in projects like this. All right, let's try to set one of these up. It is pretty simple and straightforward. This one is a sound reactive, so it actually has a microphone. So if you wanted to use any of the WLED presets that can use this and the LEDs can react to music, you can do that. So we're gonna plug our LEDs in first. We're gonna plug this in. So we're gonna to go to settings, Wi-Fi, WLED AP. That's what you're gonna select. And it's gonna pull up this screen. You can go to the controls, which just helps you control everything. The thing you're really gonna to wanna to do is go to Wi-Fi settings. And then you're going to put in your network name and your password. Then you're gonna download the WLED native app. And if you're connected to the same Wi-Fi as the controller, it should find it in the app. So it already found this WLED controller here. It's just called WLED. So we select that, go to config, LED preferences. So this is set up for a WS281 string. We have, because this is what I bought, the SK6812s with the RGBW. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna change our length to 320, hit done. And then we're gonna save this and you should see this change. There we go. It's really that simple. Then you can go back. We'll check red, make sure it's red. Green, make sure it's green. Blue, make sure it's blue. If those things were not correct, you can change the order of the RGB, the red, green, blue, to make sure it is correct, but this was pretty easy setup. All right, so now we have our two shelves totally up and running, and you might be wondering, how are we gonna easily control these things? I don't necessarily wanna have to take my phone out and turn them on or off, and they're plugged in pretty much all the time. There are a few things that you could do. You could get like a Wi-Fi switch to go between that AC to DC converter, and the plug, you could turn it on and off that way, do routines, that type of thing. But I wanted a much more elegant solution. And that is where the Akera Light Switch H2 US version comes in. Let me just show you really quickly. It has two buttons. The top one I have wired to my overhead lights and the bottom one, you'll see. Overhead lights. And then the bottom switch, Super simple, super elegant, no apps, nothing like that. You just walk in, press the button right there on the wall, and it'll turn the shelf lights on and off. Now this Smart Swiss has a ton of features. It is a 
two button, but one channel switch. That's the one that I have. They have other versions as well. You can install it in a single pole configuration or a three way, depending on what you have at your house. And this is super unique. I haven't seen this much before. It can be installed with or without a neutral wire. Mine is with the neutral wire because there's some features that I wanted. You're not gonna get the full feature suite without the neutral wire, but I thought that was pretty cool that it'll work without a neutral wire. It has thread and Zigbee support, and I've tested both of those. It can also do decoupled switch mode. So that switch on top that controls my lights, I could decouple that. And so there would essentially be two smart switches. And you might be thinking, Richard, why would you want something like that? Well, for instance, sometimes you might have like a smart smart light bulb or something like that. You don't wanna actually turn the lamp off and disconnect that smart light bulb. You just wanna press a button and the bulb itself will turn off, but maybe you don't wanna cut power to it. There's tons of examples like that. It has power off memory that can be set up. So if you lost power and then power came back, it doesn't have to automatically turn on and turn the lights on while you're sleeping. It has power monitoring if you're using that neutral so you can see the consumption that you have on this switch. And this is pretty neat. It has overheating and overloading protection. So the switch will auto disconnect the circuits during overheating or overload, ensuring safety by preventing damage. Now I said this has thread and Zigbee. I'm using this in the thread configuration using Home Assistant, but Akara also has their own hub and you're gonna get the full feature suite through their hub. And one of the really neat things that I like about using the Akara hub is that that bottom smart switch has multi-press functionality, which you're not gonna get on any other hub setup. So you can press it once and it can do one thing that way. You can double press, have it do something else, or you could long press and it could do something completely different. So I pulled these two WLED controllers into Home Assistant. I pulled this switch into Home Assistant and I said, hey, when this bottom switch is pressed, I want you to just toggle these WLED controllers and just turn them on and off. And it's that simple, super elegant solution. And I'm just scratching the surface. You could come up with all kinds of other ways to utilize this. I just wanted something really simple in my office, turn the shelf lights, on and off without an app. Just very simply press the button and it works beautifully. So thank you to Akara for sponsoring this video. Links to all this stuff will be down in the description below. I'm a huge fan of this switch. It pretty much beat all of my expectations. So take a look and as always, thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. I know we have like zillions of video options to watch and you decided to watch this one. It is very much appreciated. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up. We will see you next time.